This is the blue diamond pan, an ASEAN TV pan that's supposed to be five times harder, lasts 10 times longer, and have four times the heat transfer of a regular pan, but does it really work? I'm gonna find that out in this review. All right, guys, I've got the nine and a half inch blue diamond pan. It's very pretty. It has diamonds in the surface, supposedly. You can see that sparkly right there. Look how sparkly that is. The red copper pan is the last non-stick pan that I reviewed here, and it's one I get asked about a lot from people. Now, when I did that pan, I kind of had the problem that the advertising and the instructions were a little bit different. And I'm having the same problem with the blue diamond pan. Now in the case of the red copper pan, I chose to take care of it, to follow the instructions, to kind of baby it, and it's lasted well a year and a half later, still have no problem with this pan. But not everybody liked that. They wanted to see how it would hold up to the advertising. So in the case of the blue diamond pan, I decided to take a little bit different approach. That's right, it's a double blue diamond pan review. I'm gonna take one and I'm gonna abuse it like the advertising, and the other one, I'm gonna baby it like the instructions say, and see how they both compare when I'm done. An example of what I'm talking about, here's the instructions for the care and use. It says use low to medium heat, but in the commercial doesn't it show it using a broiler at 800 degrees? Always use a little oil or butter, but don't use extra virgin olive oil. Doesn't it show in the commercial it not using oil or butter? It says a dishwasher safe, but they recommend hand washing. So what are we supposed to believe here, the advertising and the instructions? I'm not sure if both are gonna be accurate. Before I get started with my cooking, I'm gonna gently wash both of them. I think that's a fair way to get started. Okay, I've got both of the pans on my two medium burners. Both of them are on very low heat. I got it at about two and a half. And I put a black piece of electrical tape on the one that I'm going to abuse, so you'll always know which one that one is. My first test is my favorite of all of them, which is gonna be frying up an egg. Now in this video, you're gonna see me make some cooking mistakes. I don't know how YouTubers who have cooking channels can film and cook at the same time. So Christy from Christy's Cooking Channel, maybe you can shed some light on this for me. Now I'm not making excuses, I'm just saying that that's not something that I'm really good at multitasking when I'm filming and cooking. So the fact that my culinary skills might be somewhat abysmal in this particular video might actually bode well for the pan because it actually survived my terrible cooking skills. So that means if you're a good cook and don't make the mistakes I did, It'll probably even work better for you. Again, this one's gonna follow the instructions and use some butter. This one's gonna kind of follow the advertising and not. Oh, I broke the yolk. Oh well. Did not mean to break the yolk on this one. Sorry guys, I know that probably bothers some of you. But the butter's a little bit burnt on that one. Obviously that's gonna slide out easily. Now this one's not quite ready yet. Only metal utensils on the abused version. Oh, and the handle's kind of hot too. It's not really sliding around like the commercial shows. Let me try to dislodge this a little bit and see if I can get it to do that. This isn't going too well. Oh, after flipping. It's not, it's not spinning around like they show in the commercial. It is still sticking even as I dislodge it. Yay, now it's working. Slide out. Slide out. Oh, perfect, it's perfect. So after the first egg test, this is the no butter metal utensil. This is with butter. I know which one's gonna be easier to clean. And this might be easy to clean just because it's on there doesn't mean it won't come off easily. Let's try that. These have cooled a little bit. Let me do the babied version. Some warm soapy water, gentle towel. Looks pretty good. Very simple. Perfect. Now let's try this one. This is the abused one, the black mark. Since it can supposedly take some abuse, let's try a scrub daddy on it. All right, it's coming off nice. It's coming off nicely. The abused one is hanging in there. That came off very easily. I didn't feel any scratchiness to it. Even though the egg stuck to it, it cleaned up very easily. It's an impressive first test. All right, next up they showed a demonstration of cheese just being effortlessly poured out of there. So I'm gonna try some shredded cheese here. Handful of that. All right, and on this pan, handful of that in this pan. So that'll be interesting to see how these compare. 
turn the heat up a little bit more and try to push it a little bit. Okay, well, as I'm, I can say that it's, it's moving around. It's not sticking to the bottom. How about this one? Also not sticking to the bottom. Of course, you got a butter coating on that one. Let's crank the heat up a little bit. I will say right now that this cheese is doing pretty well. Let's swirl it. You know, that's, I have to say, that one's doing pretty well. I'm using a metal fork to check it. The egg didn't do so well, the cheese is redeeming it. Okay, the babied pan come, came off nicely. This one, we're gonna, we're gonna crank up the heat even more. I mean, there is a lot of fat in here, so it probably would be less likely to stick than an egg would. But the fact that I use nothing and it's swirling around is pretty good. Once again, the handle is pretty hot. Even up here, it's very hot. Kind of having to hold it back here. That would have been nice if they had a handle that didn't get hot. But this test, I think, is a success. What's next? I recently had a comment by someone who said I should read from a script because I tend to misspeak. The idea is that if I'm reading from a script, it will avoid me misspeaking and deliver the most precise review possible. Well, you know what? I'd rather speak from here and here and misspeak once in a while than read from here and sound like I'm reading. So get out of here with your script idea. But speaking of misspeaking, in the next segment, I do misspeak. I keep saying blender when I actually meant mixer. So when you hear me say blender, think mixer. I didn't use a blender in this review. I used a mixer. All right, it's almost four o'clock in the afternoon. It's about time to make myself an omelet. This is gonna be when I just test on the abused pan because this is something in the commercial they showed. Maybe even more important than how the nonstick works on this particular dish is how the nonstick holds up with the blender after I'm done. I like just a dash of milk. Okay, I'm, I'm beating it up a little bit here. Oh yeah, hit the sides, gotta hit the sides there. Yeah. Not sticking too bad. It is sticking a little bit though. I mean, not the best omelet I ever made for sure. But more important is the surface itself, how that held up. The omelet would have been better if I had some sort of an oil in there, I think. It was sticking a little bit and gave me some problems, but the point of this test is not so much the crappy omelet I just made, but the surface itself. I right, just washed the abused pan. Look what we got. That's not good. Nope. The blender did ding the outside edges pretty badly actually looks like the bottom of the pan did pretty well but the edges did not hold up at all that's not good but what i'm going to do next is put in the dishwasher and see how it holds up there and see if that affects the nonstick surface good luck abused pan i'm rooting for you hello my abused pan okay well it doesn't look any worse for wear than the dishwasher i still have the scratches from the mixer all right, one more test for the abused pan. I'm not gonna do the baby pan. I'm gonna do plastic utensils. Supposedly these can melt in there and just be easily scraped out. So let's try that. How long should three plastic spoons cook? I'm not really sure. Do I need to add some butter to that to make them taste better? I don't know. Of course, on the abused pan, I gotta have a metal utensil, right? Oh, look, look. Oh, it worked. It worked. All right, the next side-by-side -side test, I'm gonna do some shrimp. Shrimp can stick pretty badly, so let's see how it sticks to this one without anything as compared to with butter. 10 shrimp. I have the burner set on four, so it's kind of low to medium heat. Okay, we got a wood spoon for the babied one and a nice metal fork for this one. Abused pan with nothing. Babied pan with butter. Dare I try to move these? I dare not. Okay, I've just flipped the ones in the butter. They look yummy. How about these? Okay, it's sticking less. Okay, well, guess what? They're not sticking. I wouldn't normally do this, but it seems like it's ha hanging in there. 
The handle is very hot though. I about burnt my hand trying to touch that. So I guess I'll pull out my trusty hot hands and transfer these to a plate. I mean, they're not swirling. Well, one is. I got one swirl. These are swirling. How about that? In butter, perfect. That's how I like them. Uh, these need to be dislodged a little bit. Well, they come off right away. I mean, obviously I wouldn't normally cook shrimp like this. For demonstration purposes only, I seasoned this one. I put it in butter, nothing on this one. I just wanted to see if it was stick or not. And it kind of did a pretty good job. There is some residue left behind. My hand is getting hot holding this. Shrimp, anyone? Next up, let's try some chicken breasts. All right, in my abused pan, I'm just gonna put it straight in there with just a little bit of seasoning. In the pan I'm taking care of, I marinated it. I'm gonna put a little bit of butter and oil on the bottom. I won't burn it this time. Okay, I just put the chicken breast in there and I can tell it is already stuck. But as it cooks, maybe it won't be stuck anymore. Here we go. I have them both on medium heat. Obviously that's not sticking. And this one is sticking. Actually, no, it's not. It looks like it's actually not sticking too bad. Look at the difference when I flipped them at the same amount of time. Obviously the oil and the butter is browning that. Nothing browning this one. Not as appealing. But look at this, not sticking. The main point here though is that they both do pretty well as far as the non-stick surface goes. I'm, I'm actually pleasantly surprised about this one right here. And yes, I'm doing that because this is the abused one and I can do that with this one. Right? Right. Oh wait, did I just scratch it? Huh. Maybe I did. While I'm cooking up the rest of my chicken, I wanted to point out that I did buy the additional lid, which was an extra $10 per lid, which is actually pretty useful. Uh, especially when you're frying up something that's going to splatter like this. Okay, this pan is not completely cooled off. This is my abused pan. Normally you're supposed to let it cool, but the advertising says that it doesn't warp. So let's just put it right under the water and see how it does. Nice cold water on this hot pan. And a nice harsh scrub daddy. Better yet, let's use the abrasive side of the sponge. There we go, good. You know what, it's coming out. Besides where the mixer kind of brutalized the sides here, it's cleaning up pretty good. I even used the harsh side of the sponge. No problem. Now this baby pan might have a little bit of a test here because that grease is kind of dried on there. So let's see how that does. Okay, well actually some of it came off just by running water over it. Soft, wet cloth here. It's coming right off, coming right off. What do you guys think? Pretty good, huh? All right, next up for my abused pan, I've got a couple more tests that were shown in the commercial. How about a hammer and some sandpaper? That should be fun. All right, on the commercial, they show them turning it over and hitting the back with a hammer. I don't have the same kind of hammer they had in the commercial, but it shouldn't matter, right, Bailey? Okay, Bailey has to check it out first. Okay, how's the pan smell to you, Bailey? Now, I'm not gonna put anything protective down because this is my abused pan and it should be able to handle anything. So let me just try giving it a good whack right here. Oh, my ears. Okay. Don't know about that, guys. I didn't even hit it that hard. I'm gonna say, eh. Another demonstration, they used some sandpaper and then fried an egg afterwards. But let me do, I think I counted about nine swirls. I'm gonna try to keep it as accurate to the commercial as I could. Okay, that's as many times as I saw in the commercial. It looks a little bit scratched, but better than I expected for sandpaper. So I'm gonna clean this up and I'm gonna do my final egg test compared to the babied version and see what kind of difference there is. But there's definitely a dent there in the bottom now. And there is definitely a scratch here now. There's definitely a scratch that wasn't there before. Keep in mind that I've only used harsh abrasive sponges on this. I hit it with a hammer. I've done sandpaper on it. I've cooked food without using any kind of oil or butter and having things stuck to it. And here's how it kind of looks at this point. As you can see, this is from the mixer, these marks right here. I've got a couple of scratches in here that aren't really that bad. I noticed when I put it on the concrete, I got this. And of course, when I hit it with a hammer, I got that. But really, I don't think that the demonstrations of the commercial are really accurate to how people are gonna use their pan. It's really in pretty good shape compared to how much I've abused it. The bottom surface of the pan 
is actually not too bad. When you have the babied version of the pan without all those ridiculous advertising demonstrations, it's in pristine condition. I've only used a soft cloth to clean it. I've only used low to medium heat. I obviously I haven't beaten it with it. I haven't used a mixer in it. As you can see, the surface is in pristine condition and it's a very attractive pan. I think that if you don't abuse it, if you kind of take care of it, you use oil, don't use high heat, this is actually gonna do pretty well for you. We have the final egg test. Let's do it. I've got the pans warming up right now. And keep in mind the first time I did the egg test, the abused pan without any oil still kind of stuck. But other than that, I think the abused pan has done pretty well. Even when things stick to it, it washes up pretty easily. All right, this time I just put a little bit of oil in there because last time I didn't wash the butter close enough and my egg got too brown. So I'm gonna do that one. Nothing in here. Last time it stuck, but it cleaned up well. So let's try it one more time. This moves around pretty easily. Oh man, I broke my yolk again. I'm gonna get flack for this. This is not ready to be flipped and it, it's not really sticking too badly. Sorry, OCD egg watchers. I know this is probably driving you crazy right now. I didn't mean to. It happens even to the best of us and I'm not even the best of us. Now obviously the egg with the oil cooked up a little bit faster. Not the prettiest egg I ever made. This is my egg skills have deteriorated, I guess, because my eggs look pretty bad in this video. Sorry about that. But the demonstration of the pan is all that really matters. It's definitely sticking worse than the, with the oil, as I would expect. It's almost, as, there it goes. Oh, I didn't break the yolk, yay. I'm using a metal utensil and it's not scratching. Well, not, not too bad. Maybe it is scratching. I think I just nicked it. Okay, I can get this one to swirl around like the commercial somewhat. That is a sorry looking egg. I, I apologize for my egg eaters out there. That's really bad. But hey, that's the way it goes, right? This one, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't do it without oil. I don't care what they show in the commercial. It's just not, not the way you want to make it. I can do it, but why would you want it? Just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. I don't know. It doesn't look right. All right, I want to give you a close-up of the two pans after my tests are completed. Now, there's other reviews out there for the Blue Diamond Pan. It seems like some cases it did worse and some cases it did better. I think if you don't go crazy with it and ignore the advertising hype and follow the instructions, it'll do pretty well. Don't use high heat. Don't use oils that will burn. Wash it by hand. Let it cool first before washing it. Don't use sandpaper or a hammer on it. Don't use a mixer on it. If you do those things and follow the instructions, I think it's actually a very good pan. But I, I'll keep using it and let you know if it holds up over time. It's been about two weeks so far, but so far I'm pleasantly surprised with it. Have you used this pan or something like it? Tell me what you think in the comments below. Please follow my social profiles for progress pictures and videos as I go. And please subscribe for more product reviews from me, James White, with Frequent Reviews.